Physical activity is important. The American Heart Association suggests at least 150 minutes of some kind of physical activity per week. Activity happens naturally every day as we walk from class to class, push a grocery cart, or even mow the lawn. What we don't think about is the impact of this movement and the role that it plays in the mind-body connection. What we do with our physical bodies can have a strong impact on our thoughts, feelings, beliefs, and attitudes. I've always had a strong passion for dance, and dance has helped me regulate like my emotions and my feelings or my experiences and help understand maybe what I'm feeling. Techniques such as dance, yoga, and meditation have become more popular in the past few years, bringing awareness to what we can gain from the mind-body connection. Movement has also been found to be helpful in a therapeutic setting. When something happens to you when you're pre-verbal, so when you're an infant or an early childhood and you don't have words yet, you can't recall those memories verbally. That's how things stand. As a society, we have this language, um, but unfortunately along the way it gets disconnected. What I help do is connect, well, I'm feeling sad. Well, where is that sadness in your body? And how long has that sadness been there? To help really connect what's going on now to maybe what happened in the past, whether it's trauma related or just really tough things. Applying the mind-body connection has been used to help individuals of all ages. For example, in settings where memory begins to fail or there has been emotional trauma. I work at an adult day services with uh, senior adults with Alzheimer's, dementia, other age-related disabilities, mostly recreational therapy programs uh, in art, in music, in movement, some movement, exercise, um, all things that we know are really beneficial for people who might have a mild cognitive impairment. <laughs> I can dance through my emotions and it maybe if I'm feeling really angry I can dance that out and it will help me calm myself down or think about why I was so angry and kind of get those emotions out of my system. Um, it helps me in my dark times and it helps me in my really good times. Um, it's just been movement and dance has been such a part of my life I don't think I could imagine my life without it. A dance therapist at St. Elizabeth said Unconscious muscle contractions throughout the body are constantly expressing feeling. The majority of our communication as humans is not through verbal language, but rather through body language. The neuromuscular connectivity, the idea of uh, connecting how we're moving and how uh, we're thinking and experiencing movement um, is so rich that uh, and the experience you're having in this body, this embodied experience, is of more importance, if not just equal, um, to what you can do with, with your physical self. What can I do if I were to get Alzheimer's or dementia, or you know, am I doomed to get that? And so we teach them a lot of really good strategies on how to promote brain health. One of those strategies that we talk about, uh, you know, we just take the view that a person's health is more than just their physical health, that it actually has to do with their mental health, their social health, their emotional health, um, as well as their physical health. And so when we think about senior adults aging, we really want to promote that there is this connection between their social and emotional well-being that also connects to their physical well-being as they're healing. The American Dance Therapy Association was founded in 1966 and defined dance therapy as the psychotherapeutic use of movement to promote emotional, cognitive, physical, and social integration of individuals. Ermgard Bartimiev was fundamental to this process in the United States. Well, she was a physical therapist by trade, so she brought in developmental movement patterns into the work.
she specifically worked with polio victims and she had great success with getting people to walk again that other approaches were failing. Traditional talk therapies coupled with dance therapy can be used to help a person feel safe and to establish stability within themselves. The clientele I work with, um, either just talking or doing the reprocessing of trauma, they will definitely talk about, you know, my stomach hurts or a lot of sensations in our core. Um, my, our chest is tight. I'm trained as a dance therapist to meet that person where they are. So he needed to kick and punch and run. And instead of trying to extinguish that behavior, because um, in school it was presenting as a behavioral issue. His parents or his teachers were like, we need to stop him from doing this. And I was like, actually, no, this is communicating something to us. So he would come to me and we would kick and run and punch safe things. Then I could slowly introduce other ways of moving and being that would help him navigate his environment a little better than the way he learned while he was in this trauma, he had to kick and punch and run to survive. To allow the body to process or, or um, and sometimes actually move with it. Um, so in cases of trauma, um, unfortunately, that can be a very physical reaction. And so whether it's a car accident, um, you know, we may put our hands up you know, or brace ourselves, and so our body will be tense when we're either talking about the trauma or reprocessing the trauma. The importance of movement is a fundamental part of who we are. Having awareness of the mind-body connection can help us both physically and mentally. Dance therapy is one example of how the mind-body connection works together to support the healing process. Your movement matters.